Hello and welcome to another episode of V7. I'm your host Rishti Sharma and today we have with us the very talented Dr. Neelam Gupta. Dr. Neelam is the founder and CEO at Aroho Foundation. A very warm welcome to our show ma'am. Thank you. Thank you Rishti. Tell us something about yourself, something about your initiatives, how did it all start? Aroho means a ray of hope. It's a short form of a ray of hope and it's also the ascending notes of music as you know Aroho. Aroho started in 2001. when i registered it as an ngo but the seed was sown when i was just a child studying in uh, say 8th or 9th standard going back a couple of decades and um, at that time i had thought that uh, i want to give back to the society because i was quite moved by the poverty around and uh, it disturbed me a lot you know when children were not equal some children never studied some children never got clothes some children were not even having shelter so that was the turning point and at that time i had decided that one day i might be able to help them help the society that's amazing ma'am so what really motivated you to take this as you know a career because a lot of time a lot of people do want to help the society and give back but they fail to so what is your motivation to keep going and just give back to the society it was basically a dream you know a passion to do it and as i moved along i studied i finished my schooling college and also uh you know as as i finished my studies this kept growing stronger this need to do something because poverty was not uh, reducing it was not alleviating sufferings were increasing every day i would watch new things happening in this society with women you know that that needed some solution that needed to be addressed so this particular um, you know seed in me kept kept uh, hankering and kept telling me to do something and that was the motivation i guess that one day let me see how i will be able to help the society so i did my uh, post graduation in zoology and then i did my phd in agriculture but uh, the major problem was that you know as happens in the indian society uh, my parents wanted me to get married after studies so i also i told them that i wanted to do social service i wanted to get into this uh, a uh, mode of helping people so they said nothing doing that's not possible being a woman how can you do that and first you have to have something for yourself only then you can go out and help people give back to the society give back to the society and you better get married and after that you do whatever you want so once the children were uh, old enough and they didn't need so much of my attention then again i thought that now i should take a plunge but that happened quite a few years after my marriage and after children settled down in 2001 so it took me those many years to actually give shape to my dream but you I refused to give up and you know that's that's how the journey changes yeah i refused to give up but also i kept adding my skills you know because i knew that one day i'll need that so i was doing various types of businesses freelancing and i took up uh, business into printing publishing where i was writing on gender education developing content for government organization trying to understand the whole scenario what was happening around there's a lot of stigma around social entrepreneurship not being a very viable career option is there a balance between the two can it really be a very viable career option so what's your take on that i would say it has been very satisfying with for me and it has been a journey which is truly liberating and truly you know given me the entire uh, perspective in life it has been my calling in fact and i feel it's been the purpose of my life it's been for what i am born for so when you have that kind of passion when you have that kind of drive to take up a vocation or take up any anything like a social under enterprise or another enterprise the passion drives you so right. if you have that passion to help people then money is a uh, sideline you know money is not your primary yes motive uh, for going on so that is what i feel people who have a passion to uh, bring change in the society or make a difference to people's life no matter what then for them social ent- entrepreneur is the best option and that gives a lot of satisfaction and it's it's uh, its own reward basically but if you want money and if you want money at any cost and uh, a social angle doesn't drive you for them yes it may be challenging so one has to discover oneself So list of achievements are endless. So till now what has been your proudest moment or achievement that changed the charts for you? 
Okay, uh, there have been so many moments, you know, where I have felt yes, some uh, difference has been brought. Even us, even one woman, one youngster, comes to us and says that okay, uh, because of your help, today I am earning this much. I am I am no more poor, or I am able to afford food. I am able to afford uh, two pairs of clothing. Those moments are always rewarding. You no, know, you feel good. But one such moment I recall is, uh, you know, uh, we are working in Meghalaya uh, where we are trying to skill women, we are trying to give them certain skills so that they can earn more. So one such project took us to a village uh, in Meghalaya near Cherapunji and you know Cherapunji is the highest rainfall area. Yes. And we were there to help women to get gain some skills so that they can earn better. But when we reached there, I saw that all the women were doing nothing except fetching water, going uphill, downhill, fetch water, come uphill, downhill, bring that water. And in Meghalaya, entire, day, would go entire in. day and then, you know, they have those back uh, bamboo made baskets, right. triangular baskets in which there is a picture of say about five, six liters. No, they can't carry more than that on their backs. So the whole day they would do five, six rounds, bring water and imagine they were just collecting enough to uh, cook and Take to drink. Daily needs. Mostly exactly. uh, daily needs were not even looked after by this small exactly. amount of water. So that way, you know, we thought that unless until we solve this problem of these women, we can't take them forward. They can't do anything meaningful with their lives if they are not freed from this daily drudgery of lifting water. So there then we, uh, you know, studied the area and we studied that stream and we built a solar water uh, pump there, which took water, lifted water up the hill stored it there and then it was brought by way of gravitation to the village and that tap was provided for these families, two, three taps in the village where they could collect water just there near the house. So that was a moment, you know, when these women were liberated and we felt, I felt personally so proud that 120 women, now they can do something meaningful with their lives. And then we gave them skills. Today they are making honey, they are making jute bags, they are making many other products which are helping them, uh, you know, earn better, which has brought happiness in their lives. And moreover, you know, their lives, they are healthier now. Their kids are healthier because they are washing daily. They are, you know, using the water to, uh, for their different chores also. Now besides, you know, now they're, the whole family, you can see the impact in that village. And now we are just promoting that village as a tourist village. You know, so that people can come and see how the change has brought this difference to their lives and how women are now making different products and different things which is bringing them more revenue and the entire village has seen the change. So I guess that could have been, uh, I can call that as a proudest moment Definitely of life. Definitely it would be, you know, they say there's nothing more satisfying than a changed life. Absolutely. And impacting so many lives can definitely bring a lot yes. of satisfaction, content to your life. That Absolutely. adds a lot of Absolutely. meaning. Uh, so ma'am, uh, how difficult or easy it is being a woman, you know, trying to make your mark into a social sphere, you know, how welcoming were the men there, uh, how did they, you know, look at you one, you know, in the initial day, so how did that happen, so if you could brief us on that. Okay, uh, it has been a mixed journey, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, things have been pretty difficult, being a woman, it was a double challenge. What happens is, you know, firstly, you have to meet the challenge which comes from your family, which from your close circle, you know, your family will tell you, don't go there. We we took up a project, bold decision of taking up a project in an Excelite area, you know, which was very difficult. People would not venture there. And being a woman, everybody told me, you, sh you cannot go there. You cannot take that project. But then I thought if I am needed there, if my interventions, if what I'm doing is required there and government also, it was a government project. So we want to go there, then nothing should stop me. I should not fear anything. So that was the decision taken. And I also ventured there. There were threats from Nexalites. There were one of our um, uh, worker was also captured by them that you can't enter this area. Why are you coming here? This is our, you know, this was, there were scary things. But then my, me, my team, we were all prepared for that. We were not, you know, uh, prepared to really submit to their unreasonable things. We had to go on. So we were quite motivated. Slowly they saw that we are only for the welfare of people. We are not here to earn money or doing any other thing. 
second challenge would be in a male dominant dominated society when you are walking through villages when you are uh, going to terrains where females are not even allowed to speak they are in this much a parda and you know all these men are not uh, really prepared to listen to you so that is another challenge where you uh, i feel uh, you know you have to keep pursuing when you go there once twice thrice they understand that we mean business it's not a, a gender it's not a woman it's not a man look at us from a neutral perspective i am there to value add to your life forget i am a woman i am giving you something additional so when that uh, message goes then people are with you and then they value you and then they support you so this is what uh, we focus on adding value forgetting that we are women or anybody has any gender so that that's the professional way of working i guess dr neelam where do you think is the role of government you know what exact steps should the government you know take when it comes to social entrepreneurship so what's what's your take on the role of government into the sector see government is the main body that uh, does the work of uh, any any development in any any state basically so government's role becomes very very important very significant in driving any change and social entrepreneurship is a major uh, focus because they are the ones who can drive change at the grassroots we can't depend upon commercial companies because they have an agenda of profit they will work for profit see they have to earn profit they will do whatever means they will adopt uh, even if they are not sustainable if you are drawing water from the uh, whole uh, environment they will do it for their sustenance and for their profits but social angle is extremely important it's the social entrepreneurs who will see that by and large good of the society is ensured by and large sustainability is ensured future is ensured you know there is a lot of uh, drive behind the social entrepreneurship we work for the society for the betterment of the society so i think if government supports social entrepreneurship if government supports ngo civil society that encourages them to work more that encourages them to you know reach out to all the unreached uh, areas difficult areas and they find a conducive environment to work although government has certain policies certain um, you know schemes to allow ngos and to which are for ngos and for social sector to work in but i think more is needed more conducive policies are needed to let the ngos flourish let social entrepreneurs flourish and uh, you know so that they can take forward our development agenda definitely just summing it up ma'am any message that you would like to give to the audience who's watching you okay um, let me say you know uh, for the young entrepreneurs for young social entrepreneurs or anybody who wants to venture into this field i think it's the passion that should drive you passion is the thing that is needed you know money cannot buy happiness but passion can buy happiness so you work with all the passion that you have and then nothing can stop you any challenge that comes your way anything that comes your way difficulties money crunch financial crunch if you have the passion then you will sustain you will find the perseverance and you will get the uh, final success in your life another thing i would like to add to it is second point passion drives you but then today our youngsters are very smart they are well informed they have technology in their hands they have all the uh, unlimited options and opportunities to move in life but they are at the same time very confused they do not know their uncertainties the everyday job roles are changing we are seeing extinction extinction of old job roles so there i think they should have their uh things in place by believing in a supreme power by applying to the supreme power by you know being with themselves and listening to their inner voice i suggest they can sit with themselves half an hour meditation to get uh, you know the supreme energy with them and that will guide them whenever they are confused just being there and you know they should listen to their inner voice which will give them the intuitive power and the decision making power to go on in the, on in their life so these two things combined passion and meditation and you know calling on the supreme Definitely energy they can change will the... really be the game changer for them and they will never look back that's thank what i think thank you so much dr neelam it's thank very you. rare that you get to meet the real change makers and today i'm meeting one thank you so much thank for your time thank you for calling me and it's a pleasure to be here same ma'am thank, thank you so much thank you sushti